Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question, it's really more of an announcement, comes from Gary Stebbins, KC9 GGV, Golf Golf Victor. And he wants to write about receive only loop antennas and is pointing out that there is another entrant into what is becoming a crowded field. The uh, big ones, the MFJ receive only loop, uh, they've got two versions of it, uh, one with a uh, bias T for 220 one for bias T for 110. And in the US we want the 110. Um, W6LVP makes a receive only loop also, similarly with the bias D, and also with a device that you can use with it. So it will reduce the chance that you will transmit into that uh, sensitive antenna. Now, Chameleon Antenna has a uh, receive-only loop that they've upgraded recently to the RXL Pro. And the one that we're going to talk about here is a new one that has been brought out by uh, DX Engineering itself. DX Engineering is doing uh, the same thing that MFJ has done for decades, and that is when there are struggling manufacturers of fairly popular products that are going to have to go bankrupt for whatever business. DX Engineering will work with them and take over the manufacturing of their product. They've already done this with Butternut. MFJ does this also and has picked up Cushcraft, High Gain, and uh, others. Okay, so uh, the one we're talking about here is the one that DX Engineering has picked up. Now, before I jump into reading this announcement, uh, let me pay a special thank you to Ben Detweiler. Ben is one of the newest patrons for this channel, and I want to say thank you. If you would like to become a patron supporter of this channel, please check out patreon.com slash ke0og. Says Dave, I watched your YouTube video for the MFJ Magnetic Receive Loop Antenna. Here is a DX Engineering Receive Only Loop that you may want to review sometimes. Not going to review it at the cost <laughs> that it's at. DX Engineering RF Pro 1B Active Magnetic Loop Antenna DXE RF Pro 1B. It costs about 175 more than the MFJ 1888, but looks to be quite robust in its performance. Now I will point out that I have tested the MFJ receive only loop. I've tested it with the Chameleon receive only loop. In fact, I've compared the two. They're essentially the same. And um, also the W6 LVP uh, receive only loop. They're all the same thing. They are a loop and I won't call it a magnetic loop. It is a small HF loop antenna that has, since it has so little capture area, has a preamp at the bottom right at the antenna. Now what that preamp at the bottom of the antenna does is eliminate noise created by feed line between the small loop and its first amplifier. And that allows that loop to be quite sensitive actually to radio frequencies. But given that the capture design of the antenna is the same as the capture design of all of these, which are about three foot, about three foot uh, loops, you're going to get about the same performance. Now, the difference between, say, an MFJ and the Chameleon is the Chameleon has a hardened preamp so that if you have it near another antenna that is transmitting, you don't blow out the preamp. Okay, that, that is a nice feature. Also, I can say with certainty that the uh, construction quality of the uh, chameleon antenna is quite rugged. So, let's continue reading here. These, again, are not magnetic loops. They're small RF uh, receive loops. But anything this size people call a magnetic loop. The Pro 18 mag active magnetic loop antenna, formerly known as the Pixel Loop, 
and recently as in logic, are now manufactured and serviced by DX Engineering. One of the reasons that DX Engineering invested in becoming the owner and manufacturer of the amazing, when you see that word, you know you're reading a press release, the amazing RF Pro 1B active magnetic loop, uh, small HF loop, uh, is because the preamplifier design is very stout and capable. Okay, stout, I think, will take to mean that if there is a fairly strong RF signal being radiated nearby, like, say, from a vertical, okay, it won't literally break the preamp or fry the preamp. So it can handle the overvoltage. That's quite important um, and is a good recommendation for both the Chameleon and the DX Engineering. Now, having said that, my uh, MFJ loop is very close to my uh, vertical. And I've never had any trouble with a decrease in sensitivity or anything like that in the MFJ receive only antenna. Now, in terms of robustness, uh, one thing the chameleon antenna does is it magnifies or amplifies the power of the received signal somewhat more than the MFJ does. However, when you amplify everything, you're amplifying both the signal and noise. So when I did the comparison between the two, I took a look at several signals to see which one had greater signal to noise ratio. And in some cases, the uh, chameleon was better, some cases the MFJ was better. Bottom line, if you have more voltage coming out of an amplifier, it doesn't mean anything because you're amplifying both the noise and the signal amount the same. So um, it's just something to be aware of. Just because it has a more robust output does not mean that you'll have greater ability to discern a signal from noise. That's the signal to noise ratio and depends on the amount of noise around and so on. Now, I might point out that these antennas are usually mounted vertically, which means they have a null straight through the center. If you were to stick an arrow through the loop, put that arrow right through it perpendicularly, the arrow and the back of the arrow point in the direction of the null. The null is quite sharp and can be used to null out uh, things like nearby broadcast stations or a nearby ham who is causing problems for you to receive. So just something to be aware of. Okay, uh, it says, um, it's because the preamplifier design is very stout and capable. It is a specialized adaptation of the famous Norton amplifier. Uh, well, I guess, sorry, I've never heard of it, but it must be famous. They say it's famous, okay. A design achieved by the brilliant engineer and owner of Clifton Laboratories, Jack Smith, K8ZOA. Now the question is, if it's the Smith amplifier, why is it called the Norton amplifier? Anyway, he passed away not long ago. Years ago, this excellent high-gain, low-noise preamplifier. Low noise means low added noise. Okay, there's a certain amount on the bands, and you're going to pick that up. But all amplifiers have what's called a noise figure. And that noise figure is how many dB of noise they subtract from the signal-to-noise ratio in the output signal, okay? And you want the low noise amplifier, and you want it right at the antenna, because the feed line itself, believe it or not, can introduce noise of its own, okay? Um, years ago, this excellent high gain, no lo low noise preamp was licensed from Clifton Laboratories by Pixel for use on this mag loop antenna, small loop antenna, with the understanding that Jack's name or his company name would not be used. It's a mighty humble engineer there. Now that DX Engineering also owns the rights to Clifton Laboratories designs, we can share this amazing fact about the RF Pro 18 Active Magnetic Loop preamp, okay? Uh, and 
This is from uh, Gary KC9 GGV. Let's take a look at the computer here. This is the antenna he is talking about. Okay. DX Engineering RF Pro Active Magnetic Loop. $674. Okay. It's got some accessories down here, which look to me like a bias T plus a way that your transmitter can tell it you're going to transmit so you don't accidentally transmit into the loop, but rather you transmit to your transmit antenna. Okay. One of the reasons you might want to do this is if uh, you are in a high noise environment and want to null out the noise, you can use a receive only loop and then when you transmit just use a standard dipole. The dipole that is used for transmitting only does not care how much noise it receives. It only transmits. Now look at the price up here of $674.99. Now let's take a look at the chameleon antenna. Okay, this is the chameleon antenna RXL Pro receive loop. $125. But notice it's minus the uh, extra equipment down here. This particular video that is linked to right there happens to be my video. And they do that with my permission. Okay, so um, I assume it's embedded. Let's make sure it's, yeah, you can see, you can watch it on uh, YouTube if you want to. Okay, so it's embedded. Um, so this thing has that very, very good uh, preamp, but you do need to also add equipment unless you're connecting this to like a shortwave receive only uh, radio, or you uh, are connecting it to a connection on one of the higher end radios that has the extra connector on the back. You don't need the you don't need the little thing that uh, makes sure that the antenna will not be transmitted into the <laughs> into the uh, antenna. If you transmit into one of these antennas, you will definitely destroy the preamp. Okay, that's why some. And uh, just wait for a moment. I want to show you something. Yeah, I have right here on the table. This is the W6 LVP loop. Now you've got connections here and here and you undo this loop so it's one big loop around. You'll need to attach this to something. They suggest a rotator so you can move that null around. What they don't point out is you can go this way and receive uh, omnidirectionally, horizontally. This is the feed point right here and they have a little bias T, just like the others have a bias T. And this is a device. Let me look at it over here. This device right here is a W6LVP mag loop antenna transmitting receive switch. Now, you plug in the push to talk from the back of your radio, the back of the radio, this is not the one that's on the microphone, this one goes to the amplifier, okay? Here's your transmit antenna, the receive antenna, and this goes to the radio. So when you go to transmit, this thing here will click a relay in here that disconnects the receive antenna. Now, RF being the way it is, you'll still have a, about a minus 40 to minus 60 dB signal going down to the radio, so it'll look like it's being overloaded, but it's not, okay? Down here, you can turn the whole thing on and off. If you turn it off, it just goes straight through and back from the transmit antenna on, and it will operate through both of those. These are nice little cases the W6LVP makes for his. So, so there you have it. There are multiple vendors of these receive-only loop antennas. 
Uh, we've got MFJ, W6LVP, we've got DX Engineering now, and Chameleon. Chameleon's fairly recent with theirs too. So this is not a huge market. And so these antennas, although it seems like there's not that much to them, uh, can be quite expensive simply because um, they're making them for a fairly small audience. So if this will solve a problem for you, great. I have two up right now. I have the MFJ and the Chameleon. And like I said, I did a video recently comparing the two. Uh, the W6LVP works just fine, and I don't have the other, but the hefty price tag would uh, cause me to just extrapolate from my previous experience with these and say it will probably perform about the same. The ruggedness, I know the chameleon, one of the things that's nice is the ruggedness of the mount and uh, it's just a very solid type of thing, whereas the MFJ antenna just has a couple little clips on it. And in fact, I, uh, in a high wind, uh, the assembly that held the antenna up broke. Okay, so I had to order a new one and got a new one from uh, MFJ. Um, but it was not nearly as strong as the Chameleon. And I, this doesn't have a mounting at all for the W6LVP. And the uh, one from DX Engineering looks to be very strong. So there you have it, a comparison of various antennas. If you've watched this far, you might be interested in supporting this channel. I do have a tip jar. Go to decastler.com slash support. Look for the tip jar there. You can throw anything in it from a dollar on up. And some people have gone quite a ways up. And it helps this channel stay alive and uh, be able to continue to bring you these many videos trying to answer your questions. So, until we next meet, 73.